We know that the higher intensity your exercise and the longer the duration, the more likely you are to cramp. But intensity is relative. And re-education of the muscles means strengthen your muscles in a way that they need to be for the demand of what you're doing. Preventing acidosis gets rid of the cramp. So what does that mean? It means that an acidic environment contributed to the cramp. How else can you get rid of the acidic environment, create an alkaline environment in your body? Now, we don't know why we cramp. There are theories about why we cramp. I'm going to take you through the two predominant ones and then tell you what you can do. And it's not the traditional advice. So theory number one goes like this. You have space between your cells. And as you sweat, that space between the cells shrinks. In that state, the actual ends of the nerves are mechanically deformed. And so the nerves can't fire properly. Okay, this sort of makes sense. This could be a good theory. The problem is that the research does not show this. You can actually dehydrate someone, reduce their electrolytes dramatically, mechanically deform these nerve endings, and not invoke a cramp. And as far as I'm aware, there isn't any research study that has shown cause and effect. I'm going to say that that one is possible, but we're going to put it on the back burner for a second. Let's go to theory number two. Now, and theory number two is neuromuscular fatigue. Now, this one makes a whole lot more sense. So with neuromuscular fatigue, there, one of the effects is that you have an altered reflex control. And that reflex is not like, you know, when the doctor hits you and you do a reflex, but you have a reflex on the tissue level in the muscle too. And it, they're called muscle spindles. What it does is it contracts a muscle when the muscle is stretched quickly. What you will do if you don't anticipate it coming is whoop, you will contract it. You will contract it as a safety mechanism. And the reason we do this is because if you are running through the forest and you catch your arm on a, on a tree or something like that, it could just rip your arm or it could rip your muscles. And this is no good. So when your body senses, when the muscle senses a quick stretch, it will reflexively contract as a protection mechanism. Now, we know that this mechanism is altered when you have neuromuscular fatigue. And this may be what's causing a cramp. Now, this is a really good theory because when you have a cramp, what do you do to alleviate it? What's the best thing you can do to alleviate it in the moment? We all know this. We do it reflexively. We stretch. So if you have a cramp in your quad in a marathon, you stop and you stretch it, it goes away momentarily and maybe it comes back, but it goes away. It helps for the moment. For the moment. Why? Because when you stretch gently, you're activating a different mechanism inside of the muscle cell and muscle tissue, I'll say, not the cell. And instead of the muscle spindles, which I just told you what they do, you activate, you deactivate the muscle spindles with a slow stretch and you activate the Golgi tendon organ or the Golgi tendon apparatus. You may have heard of these. And the stretch will stop that reflex. So if a stretch helps you get rid of a cramp, doesn't it make sense that part of the reason for the cramp might have been the muscle spindles? It makes sense. It's still just a theory, but here's what we know does work. If you're experiencing cramping and you want to get rid of it, I'm going to give you the things that actually do help. Okay. Number one is you can re-educate the muscles and re-education of the muscles means strengthen your muscles in a way that they need to be for the demand of what you're doing. So if you're cramping in a marathon, likely you're cramping as a partial result to downhill running, or you're cramping as a result to being under conditioned and not being very familiar with the distance. The muscles are, aren't used to having to go that far or that fast. But down, even if you are, if you're a seasoned marathoner and you're experiencing cramping, it's probably because of something different than you're doing in your training. It's probably downhills. It's probably downhills. And so what you want to do is downhill training. Uh, in your course, you have maximized the sarcomere, but we know that re-education of the muscles is very effective. Number two is we know that compression or kinesio tape help. We know that it does. Now, why? Hmm. Well, here, here's a guess, right? Why it might help. We don't know, but it's going to give a stimulus to those muscle spindles. It's going to compress. It's going to just touch and give an outside stimulus like a stretch to those muscles. It does very slightly just mechanically manipulate them. It does other things with the blood flow and things like that. Um, so we don't know, but the fact that it does help means that it feeds into this muscle spindle uh, theory. The other thing that helps is this. This is an interesting one. If you're starting to cramp, what you want to do is hyperventilate, more ventilation. Hyperventilating is hyperoxygenation, right? We hear Wim Hof talk about that. You want to 
hyperoxygenate, he says. I'm not sure if that's a word, but Wim Hof says it. We'll roll with it. Hyperoxygenate. And the reason is because you prevent acidosis in the blood. Preventing acidosis gets rid of the cramp. So what does that mean? It means that an acidic environment contributed to the cramp. Because when we remove the acidic environment, the cramp goes away. How else can you create an alkaline environment, get rid of the acidic environment, create an alkaline environment in your body? Well, the quickest way to do it is with your breath. Like that. Deeply in, let it out. Whew, you can feel it. I got little goosebumps right there. Just from, what was that, five or six breaths? That's acutely how you can quickly get yourself into an alkaline state. How can you get yourself alkaline all the time or most of the time? You can remove the acid from your blood and you do that with your diet. Diet. So breath is the quickest way to change your alkalinity. Diet is the most long lasting way uh, and the most sustainable way because you're not going to do Wim Hof breathing all the time, right? To change your alkalinity. So your diet plays a huge role. And what do runners eat during a race? Uh, I don't know. Flattened Coca-Cola sugar thing this is like you need the sugar for the fuel but it's providing it in an acidic environment so you can do things like um alkalize with plants that goes deeper than this training is intended to so i'm not going to go there but you the point is that you want to alkalize your blood if you do that cramps will go away and finally don't neglect speed if you are conditioned to run fast you do strides you do hill sprints you do interval work it doesn't have to be a ton of it your muscles aren't it's not foreign to your muscles then your muscles are used to having that quick contraction and they're less likely to engage the muscle spindles, okay? So that's your final takeaway here is that don't neglect speed, right? But most runners, they even if they do intervals, even if they do long hill intervals, they don't ever run at top end speed. This is where your eight second hill sprints come in. This is where your daily or every other day strides come in. Don't neglect that fast twitch muscle fiber development. Okay, so I'm gonna finish here with the most effective thing that you can do, well, we know that the higher intensity your exercise and the longer the duration, the more likely you are to cramp, okay? But intensity is relative. If you take an elite marathoner and have them run next to you for your marathon, let's say you're running, I'm just going to make it up, eight minute pace. Some of you were faster, some are slower, it doesn't matter. Just put a number to it, eight minute pace. And you take a, an Olympian who can run 445 pace for a marathon and you have them slow down and just run with you, what are the chances that that runner is going to cramp? Even when you cramp, even when it's hot, even though they might be sweating even more than you, they might be as dehydrated, have electrolyte imbalance such as you do, running the same duration as you do at the same, not relative intensity, but just at the same pace. They don't cramp and you do. Huh. So we can talk about cramping all day long, but the truth is that cramping is very often, unless there's extreme conditions, is very often caused by under conditioning. If you take someone who's, not, who's never run more than a 5K and you have them go run a marathon, they're gonna be in bad condition, most likely by the time they hit whatever, 10, 15, 20, 25 miles. They're gonna be cramping, dehydrated, throwing up, all kinds of things. You take someone who runs 100 mile races every other weekend and you have them run a marathon, yeah, they're running a marathon or two every single day. It's no big deal. They're not going to cramp. So under conditioning is the main cause. The things that will help you are re-educating and educating the muscle. So that comes down to your training, compression and kinesio tape. And that, that's, a, that's a preventative, a prophylactic. Hyperventilation we know helps, but the reason is because it alkalizes the blood. So you can hyperventilate or you can alkalize the blood through diet. And finally, don't neglect speed. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Hey, if you like that video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And the best way to give back is to take the link for this video and send it to just one of your friends. It really helps us grow. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you on the next video.